Hi, I'm Dominic. Thanks for watching Dominic's Road Works. And today, I welcome you to join me on the second adventure with the mini lathe. On that note, this one, the little guy I made in the first adventure, of course, it's not a roughing gouge, but a round scraper. So, it's a misnomer right there. But it still works, at least it does the trick. And I should add that I'm fully aware that these tools that I make, they're not good tools, maybe they're not even mediocre tools. But, like I said, they do the trick, they work. And I kind of got it in my head to see how far I can go with them. I know there are cheap or not that pricey good lathe tools out there, and they're probably worth the investment a few times over. But for now I want to see how far I can get like this, and trust me, with the nerves that's costing me, in the future I will buy proper lathe tools. And once again, if you don't feel comfortable doing what I do, if you feel that it's not secure, or if you just don't see the point, then don't do it. Only do what you're comfortable with. Let me also mention Paul Jenkins from The Wood Knight. I'll put a link somewhere here. He made these carbide insert chisels that are well, pretty versatile, so that's definitely something I'll be doing in the future. But today, I'll give you a proper roughing gouge. Well, as far as I can call that proper. I start by roughly shaping the pipe. Do not have any metal cutting power tools yet, so I use a handsaw. I like this one for most of my metal cutting needs. The holder allows for the saw plate to be moved, so you can use the whole length, and it allows for pull action. The cuts are not precise, but they serve their purpose, revealing a piece of half pipe. If I had something better suited for the task, I probably would have cut the whole pipe in half to make two gouges. For the sharpening, I rig up a jig. Does that make it a rig? Or my grinder. I use a sled, positioned in line with the wheel, and clamp a roughly V-shaped piece of scrap to it. The idea is that one end of the pipe rests in that V and the other end rides against the wheel at the right angle. It takes a while to grind the edge down to the desired bevel. Just like with a scraper, I use my water reservoir to cool the piece down to prevent overheating. And just like with the scraper, I'm not sure that it worked. Here we are. At least it looks like what I expected. I have returned this piece using my other tools. This one is softwood. The roughing gouge works okay. The cutting edge is better in some places and you need to empty it every now and then to get the shavings out. I also tried on hardwood, another piece made of walnut and plywood. Here too it works, although I hesitate to call it good. Good thing I've never held a proper roughing gouge in my hand. Well, at the very least, this one's closer to a roughing gouge than this one. And, yeah, it's far from perfect, especially because, I don't know if you can see this, the inside is not, not really flat. It's not sharp either. So there's no, no proper cutting edge most of the time. But I did notice this bulge in here, where the pipe is welded. You can't really get a cutting edge there, so this part of the gouge is much more effective than this one. I also thought about doing it without cutting something off here, but there are two dis there, well, there's one disadvantage and one advantage. The advantage being that I might be able to attach dust collection here so the chips would get sucked out of the way. This advantage being that I can't see what I'm doing, but how can it get any worse? It's an experiment. I think I'll be trying to improve it just a little bit before getting into carbide chisel or maybe I come up with another tool. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like it, please share it with your friends if you know they enjoy a little turning. If you don't like it, share it with those friends you want to turn into enemies. Subscribe to my channel to keep you up to date. Thanks for watching and remember to be inspired.